105, this is breaking news. We are back with breaking developments into the investigation into the escape from Dana Mora. Uh, just moments ago, David Sweat pleaded to his pleaded guilty to his role in the brazen prison escape. Uh, Clinton County District Attorney Andrew Wiley was there, as well as Joseph Musha. That, of course, is David Sweat's own attorney. Right now, you have a live look at Andrew Wiley getting ready to hold a news conference. He's going to answer some questions. Uh, since David Sweat already faces uh, a, a sense of life. Without the possibility of parole, so, um, of course, there's been plenty of questions good morning, um, about what's going on. We're going to take a live listen right um, now. Today brings a conclusion uh, to the matter of the People versus David Sweat um, following the June 6, 2015 escape from Clinton Correctional Facility uh, with David Sweat and Richard Matt. Um, as we all know, Matt and Sweat were both taken into custody. Uh, Matt deceased and Sweat apprehended by Sergeant Cook of the New York State Police. Um, and following uh, the apprehension on June 26 and June 28, respectively, um, we were able to file an indictment against David Sweat. He appeared in uh, Clinton County Court back on August 20th, was arraigned on the three count indictment, um, which he entered a plea of each count to today uh, before the Honorable Patrick R. McGill with his attorney Joseph Musha present. The three charges that Mr. Sweat pled guilty to are all three. Class D felonies. They are all punishable <clears throat> as a first felony offender. Maximum sentence two and a third to seven years with a five thousand uh, dollar maximum fine. And <coughs> excuse me, as a second felony offender, um, to three uh, and a half years to seven years as a second felony offender. Um, those sentences, as um, I stated in court, would be. Um, the court could impose those uh, consecutive, the first and second counts, um, concurrent to each other, consecutive to the third count with the promoting prison contraband because of the hacksaw blades. Um, but each of those would be um, imposed consecutive. It's mandatory to what he's presently serving. And we all know he's serving life without parole. Um, but it, as I indicated from day one, I felt it was important that we uh, prosecute this case like we would prosecute any other escape. Um, charge from Clinton Correctional Facility whether the inmate um, was um, incarcerated on a life without parole sentence or a, um, a lesser sentence than that. Um, the uh, one other issue in which I felt was a, um, a major issue that, that I needed to have resolved in this matter is the same issue that we um, had resolved last week with um, the matter of the people of the state of New York versus Joyce Mitchell and that was the uh, the issue of the restitution, um, obtaining as much restitution as we could for the state of New York um, relative to the escape. And that is the, um, that monetary amount of $79,841. And that, um, those funds specifically cover the um, cost to repair the two cell walls and the steam pipe and the um, interior wall um, in the um, tunnel system that was um, you know, damage was caused by Sweat and Matt during their, their uh, escape. So um, it would be my intention at sentencing to um, make a request for that restitution figure against David Sweat as well. And of course, um, that would be jointly and severally um, uh, imposed upon him with, um, as it was with Joyce Mitchell. Um, are there any questions? How much of that restitution do you actually believe he can pay in a lifetime? Um, in a lifetime, if he were in his current status of um, uh, being incarcerated for the, the remainder of his life, which obviously we intend that, that to be the case, um, it's very likely that we will not receive um, that order um, being fulfilled by by him in any monetary uh, means. He receives would receive um, uh, a some you know form of a commissary uh, as a state inmate. Um, which would not obviously be attributed uh, in any major factor to uh, repayment of that restitution figure. But if, for whatever reason, um, down the road, he um, benefits uh, somehow or some manner from uh, his actions of June 6 and the uh, escape that lasted through June 28, then the uh, state of New York would be able to seek a judgment against him uh, for those monetary amounts. What was that number again? $79,841. Speaking of him benefiting from his crimes, did Mr. Mitchell misunderstand why he said he wasn't the justice court accuser? Well, we, 
the judge brought that up in the in a conference um, prior to um, prior to the plea being entered today, and I advised the judge that there are certain limitations um, uh, relative to that, what we can and what we can limit, and so um, I advised him that we would provide the court prior to sentencing with the appropriate um, case law on that, and so he'll have that in detail when we uh, appear for sentencing. So I'll, I'll comment on that at the time of sentencing. Why were there two felony charges of escape? Um, I discussed that after the the arraignment. Um, those are those are two of the charges that he could have been charged with. We could have charged him with one or the other. It's very similar to a, a driving, and I think I use the same analogy of a driving while intoxicated charge, where you charge common law DWI and then you charge um, the you know having a BAC higher than 0.08. Um, and so those are the same elements here in this case. Um, I charged both counts, so none of you would say to me down the road, well, why didn't you charge him with the, uh, the second count of escape? So I took care of that with the indictment, and um, uh, you know, he pleaded guilty to both of them today. How difficult was it to get him to plea? How, how, you know, what were the negotiations like? Well, there, there really weren't that any negotiations in the case, and, and it was my point through, through this whole process that, you know, he's going to plead to the, the three charges or he's going to go to trial. Um, you know, I, I, um, I understand everybody's position on, you know, oh, this is, you know, if this case goes to trial, it's going to cost the county thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, I was, you know, ready and willing and able to, to do that if, if necessary. I didn't think in the end <clears throat> that we would have to do that. Um, and I had no indication from Mr. Sweat or from his attorney relative to that. It was just my belief in, in, in the case, looking at David Sweat's background. Um, his history of, of how he handled cases um, uh, in the past, you know, with his criminal history, that, that this case eventually would, would result in a, in a plea. I mean, he's, you know, he's being brought from um, five points uh, each time we have a, a, um, an appearance in court. And I know that weighs heavily on, you know, on inmates when they're, um, they're being transported, they're taken out of their environment, they're taken out of their cells. You know, one would say, oh, it's a, you know, it's an opportunity for him to escape. But, um, you know, I'm, uh, pretty assured with the, uh, the group of uh, uh, men that were accompanying him uh, today that um, uh, we didn't have to worry about uh, that issue uh, during the transport back and forth from uh, Five Points. Um, so that's, that's the, you know, the reason why I, I went that way. And, I'm sorry. No, I was just, um, you know, and I mean, from the, from the beginning when I had conversations with Mr. Misha and David Sweat, it was, you know, one of the things that David Sweat relayed to me by Misha, and I don't know if he commented on it, but was his commissary. Um, you know, he was concerned about his commissary and how that would be attached, and that's, that's something that the um, Department of Corrections deals with, uh, with their inmates, and, um, you know, how restitution, um, there's a whole, uh, you know, flow down of, of restitution and how it's um, attached to an in inmate's case. and. Um, that's something I guess that Mr. Musha can respond to. So we don't know yet if his commentary if he has to pay restitution. Yeah, that's be that would I mean it's um, y yeah I, I just ask that you talk discuss that with Mr. Musha or with the Department of Corrections. I think it's an issue for for them to deal with, and okay. I'm, it wasn't I'm not going to deal with it. Absolutely not. Okay. You know my 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 aspect was if he's going to enter a plea of guilty, either pleads to the indictment and leave sentencing to the court, and I have a pretty good un you know idea of how the the court will will go forward with sentencing and in um, uh, and, and that, you know, after we continued the investigation of how much the, the cost of the repairs um, to the facility were actually going to be because uh, the penal law doesn't provide coverage of restitution for, you know, the man hours that, that went into the, the um, uh, search uh, and the manhunt, um, that we could only attach those uh, those issues, uh, that monetary value, or the repair of the two cells in the, in the tunnel system. Um, once that figure was established, I knew we'd be able to go forward with, with that restitution issue. And so that was that was a major concern to me that we had that. So do him and Joyce Mitchell pay the same amount, or do they share that cost, or how's that? Work? Well, Joyce Mitchell could be held, you know, fully responsible for it if if um, David Sweat doesn't pay a dime for it. Um, and vice versa, but they're they're because they're both defendants that um, their actions resulted in in the damage being caused. Um, obviously, it was Sweat and Matt who did the damage, but they did it. They wouldn't have been able to do it in that manner without Joyce Mitchell. Um, that um, 
you know, they're both held jointly and severally liable for it. So she could pay half, he could pay half. Literally, that, that could happen if for some reason, uh, you know, a member of David Sweat's family came in with, um, you know, $40,000 tomorrow, he could pay off his half of the, of the restitution amount. Mr. Wiley, uh, would Dean Palmer also have to pay restitution? To That's an issue um, uh, that we're dealing with. Um, that I'm dealing with with his um, with his lawyer that I'm dealing with with the inspector general's office um, you know based on uh, his culpability and liability in the case um, it's not at the same level although some people may think it's at the same level to some extent as Joyce Mitchell but um, uh, although he provided the hamburger meat to uh, Matt that had the hacksaw blades in it there's you know, we would have to prove the issue that he knew that the hacksaw blades were in there, um, which I think would be a very difficult issue um, to prove. But um, uh, you know, he's not he's not charged with with in that aspect. He's charged with promoting prison contraband, which providing the hamburger to uh, Sweat and Matt that had the hacksaw blades in it. But we didn't have any information that he knew the hacksaw blades were in there. So on that end, it, it may be difficult to. Um, have that ordered in his ultimate uh, disposition of his case if we go that route. If that's the case, how come he's facing so much more <coughs> prison time than Joyce Mitchell? He's not. He's facing the, the same amount of prison time, two and a third to seven years, um, on the promoting prison contraband charges. They both have different charges. You know, they both have different charges that were involved in the case, and um, so it's they both have a, a two and a third to seven you know, maximum sentence. Um, and has anything come across your radar screen as far as alleged abuse uh, by prison guards to inmates? Relative to this matter? Relative to the Inspector General's? In, um, in the aftermath of the... Right. So that's uh, an issue that you'd have to speak with uh, Catherine Lee um, on uh, relative to her report. Just so I understand, so you're saying that the, it's not like the state could receive a hundred and Seventy-nine thousand. Okay, so that's the most. That's the most that that the state can recoup from anyone involved in this in this matter. Even them combined. Combined. Okay. So seventy-nine thousand is the, the bottom total line. Total restitution cost, and <laughs> it you know if Mitchell comes forward and says, okay, I've got the money. Here's the seventy-nine thousand right. dollars. Then Sweat is off the off the cuff for yes. paying it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's just seventy nine right. It's just seventy nine thousand eight hundred and forty one dollars. That's the that's the full amount. Okay. Was there any talk okay. about restitution having to do with the full response with all the SWAT teams and is there even a way to get restitution for something like no. that? No. Not under the penal law, there isn't. Would it come as a change of plea because it wasn't quite a plea deal or No. It's just uh he came in today and uh, up until the time of of uh, him entering court today I Mr. Musha wasn't, you know, 100% positive whether he was going to plead to the indictment or not. Um, that's, you know, there was never a plea deal in this case. It was plea to the indictment, leave sentencing to the court, or go to trial. When did you find out that he was taking the plea? Same time you did. Mr. Musha tell you? Well, it's, it's Department of Corrections. Department of Corrections. Yes. yes. Okay. It has nothing to do with his sentence. It's totally separate. Mr. Wiley, a bit of closure here, but obviously this uh, escape and the ensuing investigation was something that changed the lives of people in Clinton County. It did. Um, yourself, what changes have you noticed, or what do your neighbors in Clinton County tell you has changed? Some of them have told me, why are you wasting money prosecuting David Sweat? I gave them the same answers that I've given you today. Um, uh, you know, many people and the majority of people are, are very thankful that um, this matter is, is basically resolved now. That um, uh, my friends and uh, people in, in the Saranac, uh, Denimora area, 
are extremely relieved to get their, you know, to have gotten their lives back to normal. Um, you know, we, we talked yesterday, I know that um, there were some reports after the the shooting report was issued by uh, acting uh, DA Glenn McNeil yesterday um, relative to, to Matt shooting and then um, Jay Cook shooting of, of Sweat that, you know, she still has this, you know, I think it's the, the woman who was in the, um, uh, the camper, uh, the RV referred to, um, you know, that she still has issues dealing with, with that whole aspect that she could have been shot and killed or her family could have been shot and killed. And that's certainly the case and she may not, you know, uh, those fears may not leave her for quite some time, but I think overall, uh, number one, that nobody was hurt, um, that these two were taken in custody. It did take, obviously, longer than, than everyone hoped and expected, um, but um, it's, it's now, you know, brought itself to, to closure here. So I, I think everybody's, you know, extremely relieved, uh, extremely satisfied. Uh, yesterday, I, or not yesterday, last week, I was, you know, I think, at PetSmart buying my dog some food. I'm walking out with a 40 pound. You are watching uh, live right now as Andrew Wiley is talking about um, not a plea deal, a guilty plea by David Sweat. He's pled guilty, pleaded guilty to three counts, uh, two of which were escaped, one of which was uh, distributing prison contraband in connection with his escape uh, from Dannemora. There's also discussion about uh, paying restitution of uh, upwards of 79, over $79,000. Of course, all of those, uh, the sentencing, the, the, the restitution will be decided in a February 3rd um, sentencing hearing. That's going to be at 10 a.m. Um, and uh, till then, we again, we've, we've found out that David Sweat has pled guilty to the charges relating to the escape. And District Attorney Andrew Wiley, who's speaking now, stressed, he said there is no plea deal. He said there's been no negotiation. It was a straight-up uh, guilty plea, so they didn't give anything up in this. Um, largely, it'll be for leverage, he said, if they ever need it. Uh, formality, he said that it was important to him to prosecute this like any other set of charges. All right.